and your palms are sweaty, your knees are weak, your arms are heavy. Those are very understandable symptoms if you're on stage about to perform like Eminem describes in the song Lose Yourself. But what if you're just sitting in front of your computer working on a presentation or just having lunch and all of a sudden you have all of these symptoms of anxiety for no obvious reason? This is what psychologists call free floating anxiety. It's a diffuse chronic sense of uneasiness and apprehension not directed towards any specific situation or object. It is not recognized as a disorder, but it can still feel very uncomfortable. Free-floating anxiety is believed to originate from a hyperactive amygdala. That's the part of your brain that participates in regulating your emotional responses and particularly your fear response. There are many reasons why your amygdala may be hyperactive. Trauma is a big one. When someone goes through a traumatic experience, the wiring in the amygdala changes. It makes you more likely to stay in a state of high alert, always on the lookout for potential dangers, even when there are none. Another big one is chronic stress. If you're going through a lot at the moment, free-floating anxiety may pop up during what feels like the most random of times, but it's actually a symptom that you're going through a lot, and unconsciously, you're more likely to expect bad stuff to happen. So you think you're just sitting in front of your computer trying to study or doing something that feels fairly routine, but in the background, your brain is playing a big game of what if, trying to figure out what could go wrong. So of course, it's very hard to focus or to get any kind of work done. And you may be thinking, okay, I'll just push through through. Surely my anxiety is going to disappear. But unfortunately, it doesn't work this way. Pushing through is yet another stressor. So by trying to ignore your anxiety, you'll end up feeling even more anxious. So what can you do instead? I'm going to share with you three simple techniques to manage free-floating anxiety. I call it the full spectrum reset because it addresses all the factors of anxiety in order of importance, starting with emotional factors, then cognitive factors, and finally behavioral factors. In short, what we're going to do using those three simple techniques is that we're going to reset your body, reset your mind, and then reset your plan. First, let's reset your body. Anxiety is a psychophysiological response. It's basically your body's way of signaling that something feels off. One of the simplest ways to deal with anxiety is to stimulate your body's parasympathetic nervous system. So let me just explain why this is a great approach. Your autonomic nervous system, which controls your involuntary responses and body functions, is divided into two systems. First, you have the sympathetic nervous system, which is in charge of the fight or flight response. And second, you have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is in charge of the rest or digest response. So I came up with a weird way to remember them, but you can think of those two systems as Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King. Think of the sympathetic nervous system as Timon, always on high alert, quick to react, looking out for danger. That's your fight or flight system. And then you can think of the parasympathetic nervous system starting with a P as Pumba, more relaxed and laid back, who loves to eat, to take things slow. That's your rest or digest system. So what we want to do here to deal with free-floating anxiety is to stimulate your body's parasympathetic nervous system, again with a P like Pumba, which will effectively counteract the fight-or-flight response by slowing down your heart rate, reducing your blood pressure, and helping your mind relax. To do this, stop whatever you're doing and stretch. It doesn't need to be a full-on stretching session. You don't even need to get up if you can't. You just need a few dynamic movements and maintaining your muscles in a position to the end of their range of motion. So I'm going to share two of my favorite stretches and you can try them with me. The first one is the chest opener, where you clasp your hands behind your back, then you squeeze your shoulder blades toward each other behind you, and you push out through your chest while taking a deep breath. This one is a great one to release tension in your upper body. Then try the spinal twist. Take a deep breath, inhaling while lengthening your spine, then exhale while rotating your torso to one side, gazing over your shoulder. Repeat the spinal twist on the other side. Inhale while lengthening your body, exhale while rotating your body. Taking slow, deep breath will help stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. To finish resetting your body, drink a glass of water. Dehydration can mimic some symptoms of anxiety, such as having a dry mouth or feeling lightheaded. So staying hydrated can help manage those false triggers of anxiety. Now that you've reset your body, let's reset your mind. Free-floating anxiety can arise when we have emotions that we haven't identified yet. By naming our emotions, we can better understand and manage them. This process helps making our feelings more tangible and less overwhelming. It's like 
turning on the light in the dark room to clearly see what's there. This is a technique that researchers call effective labeling, where by labeling your emotional state, you can better manage your physiological response. Research has found that engaging in affective labeling results in higher brain activity in our prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain in charge of executing functioning like decision-making and self-control. It also reduces activity in the amygdala, which, as we've mentioned earlier, is your emotional center, the part of your brain that's involved in the fight or flight response. So just labeling your emotions will help you feel more calm and in control and reduce the sensation of free-floating anxiety. The easiest way to do this is five minutes of journaling. You can do this in a journal, but you don't even need to. And in fact, you may not have your journal with you when suddenly experiencing this free-floating anxiety. So the good news is that it really doesn't matter where you practice affective labeling. You can write your thoughts down on your phone, in the notes app, you can open your note-taking tool, you can even have a special tag in Rome or Obsidian or some specific place in Notion to label your feelings when experiencing free-floating anxiety. Just ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? You don't even need to write full sentences, just a list of words that describe your emotion. It only takes a few minutes and it's going to be a super efficient way that's free, that's non-chemical, to increase activity in your prefrontal cortex and reduce activity in your amygdala. As you can see, effective labeling is literally just putting feelings into words. Once you have those words, it's a lot easier to ask yourself why you're feeling this way. Instead of just feeling a general sense of anxiety, you may realize that what you're actually feeling stressed about is a deadline, or maybe you're worried about an upcoming social event. Once you've labeled these emotions, you can start to address them more effectively. And this is exactly what we're going to do in the third step. Now that you've reset your body and you've reset your mind, it's time to move forward by resetting your plan. When we're anxious, we often perceive tasks as more overwhelming than they actually are. This can make us feel stuck. Psychologically, this is a mix of catastrophizing, which is when we imagine the worst possible outcomes, and analysis paralysis, where overthinking leads to inaction. So what we want to do here is to reduce the cognitive load of getting unstuck. We want to choose an action that requires minimal mental energy and no extra planning. So look at your task list and choose the easiest thing you can do right now. Not the most urgent one, not the most important one, but really the easiest task that you can do right now. Is there an email you can send, a draft you can read to check for typos, some little piece of copy you can write for social media? What you're looking for is a small win, something that will shift your focus to the present moment and that will move you from a state of paralysis to a state of action. So there you have it. This is my full spectrum reset. Reset your body, reset your mind, reset your plan. It's quick, easy, and it can help manage those moments when you're feeling anxious for no obvious reason. Okay, I do have to say that if you're experiencing chronic or severe anxiety, please do consider seeking professional help. YouTube is not the right place to find help if this is something you constantly struggle with. But if it is something you experience from time to time, I hope you'll find the full spectrum reset helpful. Let me know in the comments if you give this a try or if you have similar practices to recommend. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Squishy, squishy. Hey.